well. So, five, four, three, two, one. How you doing, Ethan? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. So it's cold here. It used it? to be really warm, and now it's now it's back to being cold. Why don't you tell us where's, the before that. where's there? Iowa. Ames. Iowa. Iowa. What are you doing in Iowa, dude? I don't know. You wait a minute. You lived here. Uh, I don't know. I did, but I have an answer to what what I was doing there. What are you doing there? I'm doing school. Finishing school. Grew up in Des Moines. So oh. trying to trying to escape the cold anytime soon. Yeah, hopefully when I graduate. In when are you graduating? Fall. Uh fall twenty twenty. Awesome. Hopefully be heading down to Florida. You have Toot a really sweet. nice ASMR voice, by the way. I know. Thank so, you. I did live in uh, in Iowa for uh, three years, two winters, and that was the most miserable that time of my life. <laughs> I I would guess because you're in Florida now, yeah. I was in Florida for two years before I moved there, maybe a year and a half. Mm. That's where I met my girlfriend, and we actually moved up there because that's where she got accepted for vet school. Oh, perfect. So we were only dating for about six months before that happened. And about three months into the relationship, uh, we were kind of like talking about her and saying how, yeah, we probably shouldn't get, uh, you know, serious because she's moving soon and blah, blah, blah. And that's that's when I just threw the bombshell. And I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm moving there with you. <laughs> Good for you guys. No, nope, that's a. Yeah, man. I was like, I worked at Home you don't Depot. See a lot of that. I know, and uh, we met on Tinder too, so that's even, even scarier, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. You, Tinder stories don't normally end, end magically like this. Or with so. everyone alive. Yeah, they're. Yep. Some yep. Tragic that's stories. A few of those. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, at the time, I was working at Home Depot, and I was making ten dollars an hour for part time because Home Depot doesn't hire full time actually. Fun fact. Really? Yeah. Do you know why? <clears throat> I think it's because they don't want to pay all the uh, benefits. Hmm. They save so much money by having like 180. My Home Depot here in Castleberry had about 180 employees, and uh, only the managers were full time. Wow, that's. I guess that kind of makes sense when you look at other companies in that sort of division where, you know, scheduling between scheduling and time off time on different events and stuff it probably does end up being cheaper to have i think it does yeah and it also like it helps with um scheduling if someone calls out they have like 15 other people they can call and be like hey you want some extra hours this week and everyone's gonna be like yeah i have rent to pay and yeah that's true payments. yeah i didn't even i didn't even think of that there's a bigger incentive as opposed to someone who's just generally getting 40 maybe a little more hours plus week I mean, yeah, and I'm full time, but now with the uh, with the coronavirus taking place, we we're, we're not getting a lot of work because people are just rescheduling everything. They're like, oh, I don't want sick people in my house. What the hell is this? Yeah, it's so it's kind of it's absolutely crazy. It, it yeah, it is. When it first started, however many, what was it? It's been I think it was like half, two months ago, end of January when the whole yeah. thing started like un- unveiling itself. Mm-hmm. It like when that happened and it started, it was. It was more of a, a joke, you know, just a, a, a meme format for, oh, for don't, something. It's still a meme, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, it is. But that's like, that's how it started out is people weren't, they weren't concerned about it. They're laughing about it. You know, oh, it's, you know, nothing to worry about here. It's only halfway across the, across the world. But yeah. just recently this past, well, not past, yesterday, Saturday, um, March 14th, Disney came out with a pretty big bombshell and they're getting rid of their most popular internship pro- program. Well, All they fully the, shut down too for, I yeah. don't know how long, was it two weeks? Yep, today, after today, so starting March 16th, they will be closed until the end of March, um, until April starts and they're going to reassess on March 30th. That's just crazy. Yeah, and they got rid of all of their college program participants. They are sending them home before the 18th of this week. And you would know about all this stuff because you trying to get an internship there or actually work there. Yes. Yeah. So I've uh, I've stayed on, I've stayed on the the news there for a little bit, and a lot of people are, kind of, kind of freaking out 
a little on property and elsewhere around the world because they've closed most if not all of their their locations and people are kind of thinking that it's gonna last a little longer because it is a big move and a big financial move to get rid of almost in one day they got rid of eight thousand and i don't know what it is Damn. at right now but that's just at one property that's only one location in orlando so what was interesting is the the california location shut down first and then i think it was like a day later or a few hours later the orlando location said hey we're gonna shut down as well yep they since since disney's um headquarters so to speak um is based out of glendale and in burbank they are they'd witness it firsthand how disneyland was interacting and how um how the virus was gonna play a role in the the everyday um land area and they were able to assess it there yeah because you're gonna be sitting in a line for like these lines can last two and a half hours if it's like one of those new rides that everyone wants to Mm -hmm. go on so you got you got little kids coughing like the cat meme when you're trying to say all in in french (laughs) uh you got kids like licking railings and (laughs) And just like it's, throwing t- tantrums and spitting all over the place, it's a whole new ball game there. Because I mean, they're very. <laughs> I mean, the Disney properties have a ton of rules, but your average guest is going to ignore. Oh yeah, half of them at oh, least yeah. in, a, in any given day. Um, and whereas Disney World is the most visited theme park, amusement park, um, land in the world, and they have been for however many past years it's been. Um, I mean each of the parks get well over 30 to 40,000 peaking out about 60,000 at magic kingdom per day, every single day. You got all the numbers and for this. I'm sure <laughs> I do. Yes. I've got it all memorized. They, they <laughs> tested me on it. Um, and then <laughs> Disney is... that they test you on all those things. I know they, they don't get, they don't even get close to that. Um, and so, I mean, you have one person in there that have signs of it or early cases of, of the virus, I mean, right then and there, you have anywhere from thirty to sixty thousand people. Which begs the question of uh, how? Okay, first of all, let me let me go back to the whole uh, craze thing that we thought it was going to be a joke. Um, yeah. Everyone thought, oh, we're in the United States, or we're in Italy, or we're in Greece, we're going to be safe. Who gives a fuck? Um, in like a week we saw that it was like 4,000 people that were infected and a bunch of them were dying in China. And right there and then, they knew that the symptoms take a while to to show. And I, I believe there was like a case somewhere in Europe. I think it was Germany or something like that, uh, as well as like a couple more cases in other countries. And that's, that's when it kind of hit me and I realized, I'm like, there's no way this is not everywhere right now. If yeah, anyone I, thinks they're going to be safe by being no. not in that area in Wuhan, they're insane. Yeah. They better go buy some toilet roll. And guess what? They did. <laughs> it's all gone. Yep. Because <laughs> that's that's the first thing you want to Did you grab, stack right? up on toilet roll, by the way? Um, I actually bought one roll or one case of it. But that is purely because uh, I only had, at that time... <laughs> half of a roll and one extra one so i'm like well i'm gonna have to get some anyways and partially because i knew a ton of people were just going out and bulk buying it so i'm like um it wouldn't hurt just to get an extra one because i don't want to run out of these last two rolls i have here and right. run in there and, and just have to shower every time you take a shit exactly exactly use the <laughs> use the drain oh. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I cannot believe that hand sanitizer was depleted way before soap. I'm pretty sure it's, there's still soap in the in the supermarkets right now. Yes. Yep. There's a lot. The hand sanitizer is very minimal now, which and it doesn't even kill the virus, so people don't even know. Like it's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> misinformed people taking. Uh, not misinformed, it's I think ignorant. Up. Ignorance is what's yeah. uh, causing this for the most part. Yeah. And the lack of the ability to uh, to look up information. Like, I, I mean, I was talking about it with my dad, and he was freaking out and everything. And I'm like, do you even realize that only 5,000 people have died, and they're all, like mostly like 80-year-old smokers? 
Mm-hmm. You know, my dad stopped smoking a while ago, but he's still old. He's like 55. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it was just, it was incredible seeing how, how quickly this has been progressing throughout the, the U.S. Um, I mean, just this past week, at, you know, Monday, what was it, March, uh, March 9th, schools and classes were going on as normal. Mm-hmm. Come to 1240 p.m. Tuesday, March 10th we were getting rumors and news that there was going to be a possible university shutdown and classes were going to go completely online. Now, you know, that's just a rumor. We don't, we don't know, whatever. No one believed then, it. Yeah. yeah. No one believed it. That's colleges don't shut down. That's something unheard of, especially right. Iowa state. I think what they and say over the, past, yeah. over the past 11 years, Iowa state has shut down for like during a, during a year, no more than one day. And that was because of, um, weather. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but then come Wednesday, March 11th, at 9 a.m., we got definite confirmation that schools or classes were going online for the next two weeks after spring break ended. Yep. And there's a very good chance that they will just stay online until the end of the semester. My girlfriend so, is really freaking out about this stuff because... Um... That would be really hard well, in her, well, she's, in her field. She's supposed to be graduating right now, and what's happening is the only thing she has left is uh, rotations. So it's all physical credits that she has to do by doing practice on stuff, you know, by showing yeah. up. And those things cannot be taught online. And uh, up until yesterday, uh, the the plan was that those things would con- would continue and the the clinic would just not get any new clients and they would only be seeing uh, em- emergencies but gotcha. today they got they all got an email and uh, like a facebook post or whatever and they're saying that all the faculty and everything are going to be meeting and tomorrow they're going to be um deciding on whether or not all those activities are going to be taking place because you know of the whole freak out mm-hmm. and that's that's kind of <clears throat> crazy because they need those credits to um to graduate so we don't know and she's stressing out and everything and I, I try to tell her you know you just don't know there's nothing you can do so we just gotta wait there's no point in stressing out about it or whatever but um yeah she's just like so freaked out because she just wants to know if she's gonna be able to graduate and i cannot i can't see <laughs> i cannot imagine the school not coming up with an alternative like an online class like Hey, you cannot do those credits because we're not letting you here. You can just replace them with these instead, you know? Right. It's something that, I mean, th- I guess this would be considered. I think a virus is considered in terms an act of God where it is in no one's control. Exactly. So therefore, you know, like typical, um, you know, like just something simple, Amazon two-day delivery. If That's still they around. Encounter, yeah, if they encounter an act of God of something of some sort, you know, like weather or um, a disaster, they're gonna say, well, even though that you pay for two day premium Amazon Prime, it's not gonna be there in two days because of this uncontrollable factor. Whereas, you know, other other things, traffic, yada yada. Um, so I it, it I agree. It, it I feel like it's kind of on the university's part to find a solution to this so that people right. don't have to pay thousands of dollars for another semester or classes, um, accelerated classes over the summer. Cause yeah. that seems, yeah. I mean, it, it they probably wouldn't pay, but no. it, it just delays. Cause uh, I mean, my girlfriend already has a job that she's, uh, she's going to accept and everything like she, she needs to graduate as soon as possible so that her Florida license is going to be approved so she can start working. But if they delay the credits and everything, even by two weeks, that's just two weeks of not being able to work on top of like the month and a half she has to wait for the license to be approved. And those those loans, I mean, they keep accumulating interest. It's not like the loans are going to stop accumulating interest. No. So mm-hmm. it is it is something that people can easily stress about. But I'm, I'm of the mindset that, you know, if I cannot control it, and there has to be a solution. whether or not I stress changes nothing, I will choose to live my life happily <laughs> and whatever yep. comes will come, whether or not I stress about it, you know, I can't yep. affect it. Mm-hmm. 
Because, so I mean, there's going to be understanding see? on all the fronts during this time, especially with all the sensitive timed um, time things. So, I mean, yeah, there's there's not much you can do other than trust that people aren't going to be assholes. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they're gonna take all the fucking toilet roll, and they're gonna steal all the toilet paper. <sighs> Even and... Universal shut down, and I think Universal has shut down like three, t- three or four times over the, its whole existence. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's... NBA is canceled. WWE, <laughs> dude, the wrestling. <laughs> I laughed so hard because um, SmackDown was aired this Friday, right? And yeah. the arena was completely empty. There were no people because they shut down, but they're still going to be rolling. They're still going to be taping. Um, So everyone is coming out, you know, like talking on the microphone and trying to like wave to the crowd and all that stuff and pretend, you know, nothing is happening. But it's the most awkward thing because like there's no people. (laughs) (laughs) There's no people in the stands. There's no people. And they're just like, if at least when you talk. Like th- those two girls in the beginning, Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey, they were, uh, they were talking to the crowd, and in my mind, I'm like, at least talk to the camera. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, especially when, especially when people know, it's like you can't really hide it. We all know, so exactly. make it a little easier for yourself. Like, don't make it more awkward. awkward than it is. Right. Ugh, but it would have been a good show, and I, I think like for half of it, they just showed the an an elimination chamber match for the tag team match from the pay-per-view that happened this sunday Mm -hmm. so yeah we got some free shit but uh, nice it was it was so funny to watch (laughs) (laughs) um but i was gonna say the one of the good things i guess it's hard to say that there's anything good coming from this but i pollution lack of pollution. pollution yeah i was that not that wasn't what I was thinking of, but mm-hmm. yes, the pollution rates are down by a considerable amount now. Yeah, um, so we'll get we'll buy ourselves a little time there for the Earth, mm-hmm. um, but being able to just stay in, take yeah. classes from home, it's gives me a lot more time to to relax and not have to deal with anything. And a lot of people are starting to work from home now for the next two weeks or so. Yeah. Obviously, I don't have that option because I cannot install a TV from my house. Right. Nope. Nope. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, it's good that a lot of these companies are actually paying people. Uh, but I think Trump said that you can file for unemployment for the amount of time that you're off if you if you cannot get paid or whatever. So, yeah, there is the, a, the whole story a couple, on that. Yeah, a couple, couple different options there for people running into financial burdens, especially when they are required not to attend work on a hourly basis. Did you see that video I shared on Facebook where it says day three and it's just uh, two neighbors and they, they're throwing uh, they're throwing pieces of wood at each other because they, their backyards, they're not backyards, they're like back balconies from the story that they're living in. Mm-hmm. And there's like a small wall separating them. So they're just like, they're throwing planks of wood at each other. They're fighting over a wall. Jeez. And then this guy's girlf- uh, girlfriend or wife comes out, tries to stop it. So the neighbor throws a piece of wood and she gets pissed. And then she starts throwing wood with that, uh, the other guy too. So then it becomes a 2v1. And the caption is like, day three of the, cu- the quarantine. Because <laughs> a lot of European oh, countries yeah. are in quarantine now. Even Greece is uh, under quarantine for two weeks. Jeez. Northern Italy is all shut down. There's no flights uh, mm-hmm. from uh, Europe to, to the States, international flights. It's just pandemonium yeah, out there, I, dude. I saw something on social media a couple days ago with the current um, the current status of Italy. And the country as, as a whole is kind of in a disarray. They are running out of um, IC, or not ICU. Um, treatment areas for corona testing and treatment areas and mm-hmm. they're now running out of um doctors nurses um emergency personnel because these people have been completely outnumbered by the the quantities of cases coming in and they've been on on duty on the clock for you know three days plus and so 
Oh yeah, dude. They're they're losing their fucking minds. Yeah, the the president released a statement that we are that Italy is out of time <clears throat> at this point because they can't they can't sustain this anymore. How the the ratio between cures and uncured. So it's yeah. It for a second yeah. Italy was really high on the death to uh cured ratio. Yes. I want to do some looking up to see um, what what is happening with Italy because they were uh, they were getting shafted. Yeah, they you know? they were getting the short end of the stick. Oh, absolutely, dude, and it's it's crazy because in in China everyone is pretty much getting cured. <laughs> yeah, the 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 rates are slowly going back up now with the number of cured compared to infected. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of plateaued on the infected people too at some point. Yeah, because they they finally you know kind of they're kind of doing what the U.S. is doing with all these different shutdowns, but unfortunately China didn't do it as quick, so that allowed it to spread out a lot, um, a lot more and a lot quicker. Um, so I mean, I I'd say that we're not we're not really close to seeing the end of this. For, for a little while just because of the nature of the virus and how it's transferred and how easily it's transferred. Um, right. so, so here the, I got the numbers. So Italy has 24,000 total cases, 3,500 new cases, total deaths, 1,800, and new deaths today wow. were 368. Uh, so uh, recovered wow, is 2,000. So, yeah, I mean, it's the total deaths in China are 3,213 and only 15 new cases and total of 80,000 cases in in China. So there's a huge, huge uh, difference in those numbers because Italy has way less infected and a, a much higher percentage of dead people. So. And Italy has a fraction of the population. Absolutely. So China. it kind of begs so the question: Is like, what else is going on? Something mm-hmm. must be going on. I think it. I think that delves a little more into just purely, you know, infrastructure layout. How the how the the cities and towns are shaped. You know, the the cultural uh, signif- significances and important. You know. Well, I'd say China is a lot more. You know kind of stuck they're very, together they're very dense um in rome specific i'm just thinking rome in general mm-hmm. um they've also i mean i'm sure china has issues with water as well but i know that italy has had uh issues with water cleanliness i when i went there a couple of years ago uh we were informed multiple times both from our facilitators and from people from italy rome um, in restaurants and tours, um, if you're taking water or if you're ordering water, it's going to be a little longer because we'll need to boil it. Hmm. Um, Interesting. And then and then cool it. I've so never I'm, been to Italy. It's it's nice. It's a lot of a lot of different um, a lot of different style themed uh, towns and areas. It's really really neat, really pretty. But Rome specifically, I know, is kind of it's i'm not gonna say it's dirty but there is a lot of debris and i mean the sidewalks and roads are very crowded and smushed together sidewalks on the side i mean i I guess just thinking about an example um sidewalks in the u.s are uh, just a little over three feet wide sidewalks in italy are in many places in rome are out a foot maybe two feet and that that distance doesn't seem that much of a difference but when you're walking past someone that that distance can can make a difference if they're coughing and you know in the direction they're coughing um how the how the wind travels through the through the city as well being it it the the wind travels in kind of a a tunnel tubular formation throughout the 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 uh alleys and and whatnot in roads whereas in other countries where 
places that are spaced out and bigger, it kind of disperses the wind. You'll feel the wind, but it's not so concentrated. Where if someone coughs upwind, a whole group of people downwind will, you know, have more of the particulates in it compared to other places. I think but also I, it's because of European smoke so much, dude. That I yeah I noticed that too when I was there. There was a oh, lot yeah. of we smoke so much. Pipes and in and China, all you have is just the pollution. I don't think yeah. a lot of people smoke in China, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, there's a lot of pollution there, so uh, your lungs are already going to be compromised a little bit. But there's also a lot of pollution everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot is. of pollution in 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 Italy as well. Um, but then you have all these smokers, and then you have all these tourists, because it's Europe. Anyone can go anywhere. You need a passport in Europe. You just need an ID if you're a European, if you have a European ID. So it's kind of crazy. I just think that it's it's one of those cases where a lot of people are dying, but I'm suspecting a lot more people than 25,000 people have it. They just mm-hmm. haven't had the capacity to... Because, like you said, they're running out of places to test yep. people and the, yep. the uh, and materials as well, as well, yep. like the <clears throat> the capacity. So I think there's just so many more people that have it that we don't know, and there's so many more people that are probably just at home recovering just fine because it's a virus. You can't do shit about it. Uh, but my right. girlfriend did say that some people are prov- uh, they're developing bacterial pneumonia from it so mm. that's when you're going to need to go to the hospital and get some iv in you yeah to kind of treat it like antibiotics and all this stuff but uh i do believe that if if you're a smoker and this is taking place uh i stopped smoking for at least for now because yeah. i mean if i get it i don't want to i don't want to cause idea. more damage you know right i'm not worried mm-hmm. about it because uh <laughs> i saw this uh this meme and it says that kids like 13 year old kids in high school in school they're calling the coronavirus boomer remover. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and boomers are still, oh, like, man. getting offended. And I also saw that, I don't know if you saw this meme with, um, it's like, uh, boomers, climate change doesn't affect me, I don't care about it. Uh, and then millennials, coronavirus doesn't affect me, I don't care about it. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to die from it. And then boomers are like, the Pikachu uh, with yeah. the mouth open is like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, hold on, that's not fair. <laughs> Uh, so we just have to wait, I guess, and, uh, just let this whole thing blow over. What I'm really, really looking forward to is putting money in the stock market once this thing blows over. It is. I'm going to be so excited. It's going to be nice. Get all my money back. It's going to be so sweet. Yeah. The, uh, stock amount for Disney right now, I think it's 102. I can um, tell you, no, it's lower. Uh, well, it did go up a little bit uh, because on Friday, Fridays are usually green days, Good days. and a lot yep. of stuff goes up on Fridays. So if you if you try to sell, it's by the end of Friday that you should be right. selling if you want to sell. But Monday is a buying day. Yeah. They, I think it was, well, now, what was it? It like is uh, 101 right now. 101. But... At around, at around like 11 a.m., uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, it was $92. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And Mid- that's coming down February. from 150 or so, 155, 151. Yep. That is um, that is like a 40, almost a 40 percent decline. Yes. In it's, one, in, it's in like insane. A month uh, in a span of like three. No, February 19th is when it started, like, sliding. That's just Disney, though. That, but that's everyone. Yeah. Everyone yeah, is every, struggling. They're all, they're all having a hard time right now. Keeping... That's what she said. <laughs> 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 uh, but, yeah. Um, what I wanted to talk about is I visited Iowa this past weekend to see no, my girlfriend. Didn't. Yeah. I, you were there. It's not, I didn't see you there. You didn't? I'm the girlfriend. Amanda, you hearing this? Yeah. First thing. <laughs> Said yep. first in the podcast. <laughs> um, so I visited because I wanted to see my girlfriend and... And me. You uh, you and Donna, which is your girlfriend, uh, were convinced finally to come. I know. It's... And I'll tell you why this makes me happy. Because... 
I'm not I'm not underplaying this man. Like I visited Iowa for I think I'd say like what five six times ever since I left in August, right? And every so. time I've I've tried I've told Donna like Hey, come out. Hey, come hang out with us. You don't have to come out. Hey, 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 Um. So I uh, I kept trying to tell her to come out, and she wouldn't come out. You know. Mm-hmm. And then finally. It's classic. Yep. Finally. That's- you guys yep. came out, <laughs> and it was so good to see you guys. <laughs> I know, because had to deal with stupid drinks, but well, let's you know let's what? talk about it, man. Because I'm still salty about the fact that you got more granted <sighs> shitty know. drink than I did. Right, I didn't so, know Long Islands were made with Pepsi. That was a let's first okay. Drink. Let's let's talk about it. let's talk about the night, right? We. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm out with my girlfriend and her friends, and then you guys come. I start my night with a six dollar, r- relatively big, glass jug, and uh, I yeah. I talk a Stein, whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm not American. <laughs> so I asked the bartender, "What is this this drink that you put four drinks in it?" And she's like, "It's a Long Island or an Adios motherfucker." I don't know the difference, and I'm like. Huh. I don't want to say bye to the night yet, so let's just do a Long Island. So she makes it nice. I mean, she puts Sprite, I think, is what they put in in, in Long Island, right? Mm-hmm. And then Not- uh, I say to her, can you make it blue? So she puts the raspberry in it, which mm-hmm. I don't know. I like it. Nice. And then you you come along, and you try to have the same thing. Yeah. And what happened? What happened? Uh, well, first, I had to explain it a couple different times and then you pretty much were like okay this is what i'm talking about this is what what we're wanting Mm -hmm. um and and then pepsi was poured into the long island (laughs) i've i've never had a long island that had pepsi in it that's that's like a coke and rum move right there was it uh was it diet pepsi Pepsi or was it a regular pepsi i'm pretty sure it was regular i honestly couldn't tell um how much did you pay for yours Five dollars. Five dollars. I've saved. I and saved what size was it? Was it a little bit bigger than mine or smaller? It was, it was a little bit bigger than. It yours. was significantly <laughs> bigger. And you know, I'm not one to be I, salty and uh, just be mad about stuff, but I'm not over it. <clears throat> I know, I know that. Yeah, I've noticed in Iowa at least Ames, Des Moines, um, the the drink styles aren't consistent no they're not consistent they're not typical to most other places and like for instance you ask for the long island pepsi is normally not what you're going to put in there right Um, and also the well i mean i i guess i wouldn't complain about the price but normally those those steins i i'd say they're at least twelve dollars else elsewhere like florida and stuff right so uh, i I guess on one hand you did get more than i did for less money and something had to give Uh, something had to give bro you know i think it i think the scales are balanced i think karma is at a place that it should be yep it was a long island frankenstein it was a shitty long island for less money and more quantity Mm -hmm. good odds American production right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How much did you tip? Uh, five dollars. Nope, you didn't. <laughs> you tipped six dollars. I tipped six. Because the second time around, you tipped again. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. And then, oh, I, yeah, I got because right. I got a another Stein of. I don't. Know, what was it? What What did you? Didn't you get beer? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think you got beer. It wasn't Corona. It no, have, you would have been coughing by now. Yeah, I, I'd probably be dead. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. I think it was maybe Budweiser. I'm pretty sure it was Budweiser. No, you didn't do Budweiser because I was disappointed at the fact that you picked the other one. So I think it was. It wasn't Bushlight. <laughs> it wasn't Cat Piss. Uh, but it was. It was the was uh, the third second? option. Dog. Piss. I like Budweiser. I yeah, I was just, I I don't remember. I honestly have no clue. I mean, again, it didn't matter. I, it was shitty anyway. Yeah, oh, and you order. had to reuse the... the <laughs> yeah, the, they said we're out of Steins. <laughs> I'm like, 
It's it was so at that I'm time like, it was only like ten o'clock. It was so early. Places are open until at least three, you'd think. And it's like you you want to have a stock up of clean glasses for people to use. But of course, I'm like, you know what? I really don't care. This weird Long Island thing tasted like crap. So what yep. what what will it hurt to add some piss water on it? I'm kind of proud on the way I tricked you into coming, guys, because... Um, so, okay, I didn't necessarily trick you. I didn't necessarily trick you, but it was, I guess, the equivalent of misleading the shareholders kind of deal. So what do I mean by that is uh, when when Donna asked me to see how many people are there, I was sitting outside smoking, and I took a video of the patio. It was just me and my girlfriend, no one else. And then nice. I tell her there's like five more people inside. And that was true-ish. It was like ten people, but they were all too scattered around to even matter. Mm-hmm. So I tell her, we're going to be sitting inside. There's only like five people. Because uh, she was like, if there's not a lot of people, will come. And I knew that by the time you guys got there, it would start getting packed to shit. Because it was only like, what, 9 p.m.? Yeah, it wasn't late. It was maybe 9.30 at the latest. It wasn't late at all. So uh, I, I think it was around 10 o'clock. You look at the, at the at the bar, and it was like a mass of people just trying to order drinks. Jeez. And you're like, what the fuck? And, and in my mind, I was thinking, good thing we went out early because if we had gone out now, even if you were in the mood to go out, if yeah. I'd shown you all those people, you would have been like, yeah, nope, it would have been like, fuck that. No, thanks. And that was that was the thing I told her too. I'm like, okay, you do realize it's about nine nine thirty right now. Most people aren't going to show up until ten thirty mm-hmm. uh, eleven. Yeah. And I was like, well, no, that's fine. Whatever, let's go. And I was like, okay. <laughs> all right. So you tried to convince Sounds her good. not to go. No, I was just being. I was just giving just out making all sure the that, information. Yep, yeah, she had all the yeah. information. Because I knew Donna's the type of person that if there's any inkling of a lie. She will catch it and she will call you, which it, she did. I mean, I didn't <laughs> lie, though. No, no, no. But I'm saying that sort of stuff where, you know, if you She'll don't smell it, <laughs> give all of the right because she's she wouldn't have known that necessarily, so to speak. I so. think that she knew, but um, I think I kind of guilt tripped into guilt tripped her into coming out because I said this is like the last time I come visit. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's now or never. We, we're doing this now, or we're not doing it at all. And then we did it. Yep, yeah. it was good. Except for what was it? AJ's after was yeah. So we went to the other one because the girls wanted to dance and super um, loud. Yeah, I mean, typically that's what clubs are like. You know, you old yeah. fart. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, I I would have much rather we all stayed at the patio and just talk. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know, man. Like people in there are weird. They they really are. The, so the I I wanted to stay in there even though I wasn't ta- I wasn't dancing. I was just wanted to keep an eye on the girls to make sure that people aren't acting like stupid people. Right, especially well, I guess Iowa State doesn't really have a huge problem with it, but college mentality, college culture. There's mm-hmm. a lot of just weird weird stuff that yep. goes on yeah so, like like later that night getting random drinks poured on us yeah the uh the the, nice. the above people were like sprinkling shit and then i think who was it uh, i think it was one of amanda's friends that actually got like soaked yeah she did because i remember the whole fucking thing because they dropped the beer they yeah. dropped the beer uh glass and he looked up Cup. and he was like or she looked up i guess and I was like, "What the, what the hell?" Yeah, <laughs> the, like, the guy I, I was getting sprinkled from the rail. Yeah, I. It was miserable. It was so miserable. Yeah, but it was it was a fun. It was a good night. Yes. All all. Overall, I'm glad you guys came out and and we had some fun because uh, we never get to. So I know. I was well, just soon happy about that. Once we once we move down to Florida. Yes, and uh, it's. I mean, it's better down here, but it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> Yeah, well, everything has there. a cover, and you have to do valet if you want to go to a nice club. And jeez, yeah, I went out to Latin night in one in one bar one night a while. It was like years ago, mm-hmm. and it was super fun. 
I think it was like in the beginning when I was dating my girlfriend and she wasn't there or it was before. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had to pay to get in and then drinks were okay. I just remembered. I wanted vodka with lemonade. Okay, right? So yeah. Which is a good drink to have. It's yeah. fucking vodka with lemonade, you know? Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> I was fresh out of Europe still back then. So I, I didn't have the lingo. And I told the guy I want lemon vodka. <laughs> oh, so he, so did he just grab this lemon. motherfucker just grabs a lime and oh. squeezes it into oh. like I believe it was uh, three quarters of the glass was filled with lemon uh, vodka, so it wasn't anything. And, mm-hmm. you know, adding the ice, it, it, fooling against the whole thing. Ew. So he Water just down. squirts the lime in wow. there. Uh, I, I, I paid like 10 bucks for that thing. And wow. I was about to say, wow. hey, man, I don't want was this. It, was it at least a bigger glass or was it like a It was just a regular scotch shortcut. glass. Oh no! Yeah, <clears throat> it was like a whiskey glass. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be a little pissed. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I drank it, but I was not entirely happy about it. Mm-hmm. Drink it in, in anger. In yeah. Anger. So looking back at it now, I think, I think you got off easy. I did. And I would have much I rather have your shitty uh, Long Island. <laughs> yeah. Franken Island. Uh, yeah, it was good, yeah. but. Man, what a night! It was, it wasn't even cold. It was, no, it was uh, so nice. It was so. Pretty. I had like a flannel, I think, and jeans, and it felt. You look like a lumberjack. We took a picture. I, I yeah, have I the know. picture. I know. And you look I like am. a straight up lumberjack. Yeah. Have you seen uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil? Yes. You look like <laughs> no. one of the two. I don't remember. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't look like the chubby one because you work out a lot. Um, but you do like them. You do look like them. Well, I'll take it. They're yeah, stars. Famous. They're actors. I'll take it. Yeah, considerable. <laughs> it's yeah. a fun movie. I watched it years ago, and I was laughing my ass off. And then I watched it recently. We lived like a year ago or so. And I'm mm. like, what is this shit? I don't like this. The more I grow up, the less I like stuff. Yeah, that's. I think that's kind of how it goes. Except for food. I found the the opposite of that. I used to hate a lot of different foods, and now I'm just kind of like I don't I don't care. Just feed me. I just need the food. Shovel I actually in. willingly like some foods. Like um, I did some research to see how healthy broccoli is, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna like this now because broccoli is like the healthiest thing you can eat ever. It's super healthy. Changed my mind. And if you cook it certain ways, it can taste bomb. Yes, and actually broccoli sprouts, which I'm, uh, I'm going to start buying or making soon, they mm-hmm. have so many nice qualities. Like, um, they, they clean out all the pollution that you breathe in, all the smoking. Mm-hmm. Uh, they counteract cancer, uh, tumors, wow. and all this stuff. So they're super good for you. They taste like asshole, but they're <laughs> really good like for you. Yep. But they'll save you. So I'm going to start doing that. Nice. And generally, uh, lentil, I used to hate lentil. I'm going to tell you a story. When I was younger, and I would come back from school, and my mom would have cooked uh, lentil, and she wasn't home, what I would do is I would fill up a bowl with lentil from the pot, and mm-hmm. then I would just put it back in the pot, and then I would put the bowl in the sink and slightly fill it with water to give the impression that I had eaten food. Because if they found <laughs> out that I hadn't eaten food, they would have forced that shit down my throat. And I hated oh, it. Oh, man. Oh, man. And I was getting away with it. And then I grow up. I look up how healthy lentil is. I'm like, wait a minute. This is good. I, I, I have a, a, an, an iron deficiency. So, you know, spinach and lentil. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And I think that's story. how it goes with. Uh... <laughs> I don't. I don't think I ever went to that extent with trying to hide that I didn't eat food. I think the most I did was kind of just scrape food around and make it look like there's a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make shapes out of my food. 
Oh man, all, we were like sons it. of bitches back then. Good times. They were. What's uh? Yeah, I, go ahead. Oh um, I was gonna say the one of the things I miss most is just general, general high school. I don't know how high school is in in Greece, but it's not the same at all. So okay. we we still only have uh, three classes in high school. Oh wow. Uh, 10, 11 and 12th grade. And gotcha. uh we have 7, 8 and 9 is going to be uh, middle school. Okay. And uh elementary school is still 1 to 6. Okay. <clears throat> and I was surprised cuz I did 9th and 10th grade here in the states back in 2008. Mm-hmm. And um it was crazy, man, because schools in Greece, there's a lot more in the city. You know, every few blocks, there's like a high school or a middle school or an right. elementary school, you know, that stuff. And they only hold no more than like 300 kids. Oh, wow. So imagine Ooh, me yeah. with my European genes, still a short, chubby little motherfucker. <laughs> walking into a school with like 2,500 kids to 3,000. It was the next year. Next year, we had 3,000. But ninth grade, we had 2,500 kids. And I walk through the hallway and I got professors handing out maps. Jeez. All I had to know in Greece was which floor, uh, just a number, would tell the floor. Yeah. Because each floor that, had, a, I wow. believe, like five classes. You know, it was like a story building. It was like a, mm-hmm. like a, like, you know, a place where people live. It was crazy uh, to go from that to this fucking... And uh, it was weird because the the classes are different. So, in in Greece, after every class, we have like a thirty minute break. Okay. Uh, yeah. And we have the seven classes per day. Here, you have the big lunch break, which is like forty five minutes, and then you have five to ten minutes between each period to get to the next class. So, in my mind, because in Greece we have lockers, we put our all our books there, and before each class, we just go get the books and then go into class. I didn't have, I, I realized the second period, I didn't have time to do that. I didn't have time to go into my locker room, into my locker in the hallway, which was like in the center of the school, and then walk mm-hmm. all the way back out there like a mile to the class. I took, I took time. It, it takes, yeah. So I had to yeah. carry all this shit with me. <laughs> and I fell victim. This is how crazy the school system is here. I fell victim to all the classes saying, you got to buy a binder with three sections. And then you got to buy this, and you got to buy that. Like, school supplies are like 500 fucking dollars for each class. Mm-hmm. And I bought all that shit. I bought every single thing that I was supposed uh, quote-unquote, supposed to. And right. then a week later, I realized I could just fucking have one binder for each, uh, for the whole entirety of the class. And just separate it for each class. <laughs> yep. And that's what I did in 10th grade, and I'm, I was so angry. But hey, at least you'll know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I didn't even know that. Oh, shit. <laughs> they found you. Uh, oh, man. Uh, ma- uh, by the way, education level is so far behind uh, for each class. In Greece, we have like 14 to 15, upwards to 20 different subjects we have to take Jeez. every year. Wow. So. Here, yeah, my schedule was the same every day. Like, first period math, second period this, second period that. Each day was exactly the same. In Greece, mm-hmm. we have different schedules every day for the wow. week. So every Monday is the same, every Tuesday is the same, and so forth. But those days are not the same with each other. I I would much... I'd rather prefer that. I, I got super bored in high school, middle school, elementary school. I did too. Just I gave with, up immediately. Yeah, just it gets so repetitive and Mm -hmm. units and um like learning blocks were so long and drawn out that you'd pay attention for the first hour or whatever it was well not even that honestly maybe like the first 20 minutes and then you're done you zone out you talk make faces to a friend or whatever um check your phone or I, i don't know what and and then you're sitting there leaving the class going what did i actually learn I learned, <laughs> what, I, I learned what date it is the day is and the 
the title of the chapter we're supposed to read. Okay, cool. So most of my time was spent trying to hide my boners because I was at, we were at that age yeah. that I would just, uh, just pencil random. going inside a pencil case boner. Boner. There it goes. It was crazy. Dude. <laughs> so I spend uh, I spend most of my time in class just trying to position myself to not get embarrassed, and I was praying to Lucifer. Do and not make the on. teacher make me get up and solve this problem. Can you come up to the whiteboard? And I solve will this die. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, dude! Give me a couple minutes. Hold on. One day I, I dropped an f bomb in class. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't even like malintent. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first moved here, I, I would curse a lot when I was speaking because that's the cool thing to do when you learn a foreign language, I guess. But yep, uh, yep. I was in science class, so I, it was geometry or earth science or whatever the fuck, mm-hmm. where you study erosion, that kind of class. And the professor asked me something, and I was just like, uh, it's the fucking thing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking, oh, you man. Know, that, that thing. It's just I was so <laughs> casual, and I felt so bad. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> oh god i think one of the best things with going like progressing through the the education system is slowly hearing teachers swear Mm -hmm. and use profanity more and more yeah because like elementary school it would be you know once yeah once in a blue moon you'd hear it maybe really quietly and it wouldn't be a a too vulgar of a word it might be like damn or fuck fuck. middle school got a little worse you know you'd start hearing like shit something yeah. and then like maybe once a year twice a year you'd hear fuck and then high school <laughs> it's kind of like well shit guys what the what the hell are you doing this is dumb and then and then college comes up and it's literally i mean every single class i have or something it's just an f-bomb dropped or uh it's just just something stupid and it's mm-hmm. like huh I, I can relate <laughs> to this better now i understand as soon as you put profanity in the sentence about equations you just made my life a lot better thank you this is great i can remember it a lot more uh one of my my basketball teacher was like uh just was like god damn it to one of the kids because he uh he started dribbling and i swear to god dude have you seen a metronome where it goes side by side Mm -hmm. those were his shoulders when he's when he tried to dribble the ball he went like side and side and the the professor was like what the hell are you doing god damn it <laughs> <laughs> get over here ball give me that ball oh Almost man like that. uh that that was high school for me uh well, i remember distinctly one uh in math class we took a test this is how far behind the educational system is by the way we took a test and one of the questions was the Pythagor- pythagorean theorem i don't know how you say it in english how yeah. you pronounce it and I knew that because I had learned it like three years prior in Jeez. Greece. So I answered it correctly. And then in the classroom, the professor was like, so or the teacher, I should say, not professor. And she's like, so which which one of you guys got this question correct? And I raise my hand and I look around and I'm like, am I what the fuck? Why would this even be a question whether or not we why would you be impressed by the fact that we know this so i raise my hand no one else raises their hand in a class of like i don't know 30 kids Mm -hmm. so the the kid in front of me who was a total pothead by the way and i just say that not to diminish potheads it was just a characteristic of his he turns around to me and says well don't you feel smart now and i'm like yeah not really (laughs) fuck you bud turn around Oh man, uh, that's that's the moment. That was the day I gave up in on high school. I legit gave up, dude. Uh, when I went home, the way I dropped my bag off at the side of the door was the way I picked it up when I was leaving the house, and my GPA was like three point two. Yeah, they don't they don't do a good job with keeping students I, entertains not the right word but included involved um no they do not dude they they drop the ball big on that and that's where a lot of students just kind of disappear and they they just are like well, this 
doesn't feel like it's worth my time. The teachers don't make it seem like it's worth my time. Because, I mean, you have a bunch of kids whose brains are physically just, they're still developing. They're not mm-hmm. to their full development. So, I mean, their parts of their brains aren't even formed yet. Or, and I mean, their characters, it is, too. But, yeah, they don't even they don't even know. Part, some of them don't even know who they are. They, yep. They're trying to figure that out. They're trying to, you know, am I, do, do I, what kind of a person am I, am I going to be? What kind of job do I want? What kind of future? Where do I want to live? I mean, that time is when most kids are kind of figuring out what they want to do because your college is ultimately going to kind of determine and decide what and allow what you're you're going to do in the future. And it seems like faculty and teachers and everything they just i'm sure they realize i'm sure they get it and i would hope that they do their best to to make it a little easier and a little more inclusive for for everyone but it just doesn't feel like it hardly ever there was a when i was looking at um classes to take to help me with engineering come college i went to the the uh the high school advisor of you know trying to choose what classes were good uh, and they're like so what a, what are you thinking of doing in college past high school and stuff and i'm like um well engineering kind of aerospace engineering specifically I'm like okay yeah cool um so the class that's going to be really helpful that we offer here at um at the high school is uh ap statistics and at the time i'm kind of like that seems a little weird i wouldn't think statistics is a big factor in in that stuff mm-hmm. um i mean and now as i am almost done with college it it is it's a yeah. pretty big factor but it's not not one you need to deal with right away it's in the later classes and it's not a a huge topic it's blended in with a lot of other topics um and but they they yet yeah, so they told me ap statistics okay cool signed up for it um when they also had different forms of college uh, calculus classes, which once I got to college, I realized those would have been 10 times better because they would have gotten rid of basically an entire year and a half of um, college weed out classes for me. That's just crazy. Yeah. And so they, in the end, they didn't, those classes didn't hurt me. They didn't, put me back they didn't stop me or make any well i would <laughs> some of them made me a little miserable i did <laughs> not like some of them um but th- they could have been avoided yeah just all the way back into junior year of high school or soft no, sophomore year of high school but and i would i would think that advisors being in an advisor role would have that kind of knowledge being able to tell students like myself who don't necessarily know and i i could have and i also put some of the blame on me because i could have you know looked it up prior to that meeting i or i you know after the meeting i could have looked it up what type of math do engineers use most something something Mm -hmm. like that but when i'm sitting there and i already have nine classes and you know they each of them have an hour's worth of homework per per day or every other day where I'm and then I mean at that time I was also playing hockey every single day where I was gone from about 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. so I get home at 7 and then I'd spend just study on average yeah on average I mean it was three or four hours purely just to finish the homework because a lot of the homework I'll be honest it wasn't challenging it was it was just routine and boring routine and repetitive like a a chore yeah, it, which was the worst because you're sitting there like, oh my god, this all makes sense. This is boring. I'm not learning anything. But because of how long it is, it's going to take me an hour or two hours. So I wouldn't be done until, you know, 11, midnight, something like that. And so looking that stuff up um, after the meeting wasn't wasn't a thing. I, I didn't, didn't even think of it. But I, I, I always just kind of was... <sighs> a little not not frustrated but kind of annoyed with yeah with how that was handled and and on I top was of like that, that too other other teachers there you, you know they they have smaller classes they teacher a teacher will teach um like 
four, five different classes, each with about 20 to 30 students. So, I mean, it, it does end up getting to be a good amount. It's 100, 150 so kids. But getting to know the names, it's pretty manageable in the in the scope of things. I a bunch of other like work situations I've had to, I mean, I've known upwards of 200 people um, just from single, you know, visits and stuff. Right. Um, so, but, but my, my point was, is that they, they do get to know you relatively well in some cases. And even, even with that knowledge, that past knowledge, they, they don't do a whole lot to, um, further excel your interest or, um, efficiently utilize your time. I think it's also for them, it's like, uh, just a nine to five. They just have to pay the bills and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like they see so many kids and it's like, I can't be fucking bothered with these fucks, you know, just put them in a bunch of classes. Just what, what, what classes do they need? Okay. Yeah. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. Just, I've heard so many stories of people's lives getting completely ruined by their, um, financial, I mean, not financial, uh, their, um, uh, academic advisors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in, in college, I was really lucky because back in 08, my brother and my dad actually went to Seminole State College, which was also when I graduated from, for my AA. And they, um, when I went to see my advisor, he could not have said it any, any other way than actually telling me, I don't give a fuck about you, dude. Get out of my <laughs> office. Here are the classes. Oh. What, what else do you want from me? Like, that was the 100% the vibe and, and the attitude that I was getting from him. So I told my dad and everything, and, and he said, why, why don't you go find that, that woman there? Uh, what was her name? Uh, Alvarez, Miss, Miss Alvarez. She's still, the, uh, she's still an academic advisor in Seminole State. And, dude, she is the sweetest, most caring Hispanic lady you're ever going to meet in your life. She knew my dad. She knew my brother. She knew their names. She wow, even asked like- about my family. Like, how's your dad doing? How's your mom doing? Uh, she didn't know at the time about my mom. Um, how's your brother doing? You know, every, like, she, as soon as she saw my name, like, she knew who I was when I went to see her. And we sat down. We formed, like, the best plan. Uh, it was incredible. It was, it was just an incredible experience. And I know that I'm, like, probably the 1% of people dealing with their uh, academic advisors throughout, you know, the educational system. And that's just sad because they're there to further your career. And when I got into UCF, I was so incredibly blessed, I guess. I don't know what the fuck it was. There's this girl, Georgia, and she uh, described herself as the success coach for people that are moving from uh, Seminole State to UCF because um, UCF and Seminole State has a kind of like a partnership where mm-hmm. uh, all Seminole State graduates have guaranteed admission to uh, UCF, which is crazy because cool. UCF has hundred, uh, tens of thousands of kids and it's overpopulated, yeah. but that's that's a story for another time. In <laughs> uh, Georgia, dude, she saved my ass and helped me so freaking much, uh, especially for when, I'm, uh, when I was living in Iowa and there and she was dealing with me and everything and it was just incredible. And then she kind of switched jobs and offices. And it mm-hmm. wasn't really her job anymore to help me. And, dude, every time I had an issue and I messaged her, like, the same day, boom, taken care of. What? Your financial aid hasn't been approved yet? I talked to them. They're going to look at your, like, next in line. Or, wow. oh, this thing is on your to-do list and it's preventing you from setting up from classes. Boom. I got rid of it. Go sign up for classes. Like, just these people, man. And they're not commissioned. They're not anything. um, But those people have the passion to help people selflessly. And I really do admire that in people. And I think think that's pretty much why I'm, I'm, like, so incredibly passionate about being in a relationship that I am right now with the person that I am. Because she's... uh, She's putting herself into all this debt and all this, you know, 16-hour shifts for no money and free labor. 
and all this studying hours and hours of endless studying like i i basically had no girlfriend while i was living there because all she did was study and all this sweat and blood and tears and stress and sleepless nights and literally like sleeping three hours a night or two hours a night oftentimes to get up and study and test all so that she can do her passion which is you know saving animals Mm -hmm. and i'm like i i could never be this selfless (laughs) <laughs> and put myself through <laughs> all this agonizingly painful experience just to like you know satisfy some some idiot that comes into the vet uh, vet practice and says who you guys cares about is the the, the money how dare you like you know mm-hmm. not treat this dog heartless only cares about the money blah 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 and uh, that's how vets have the highest suicide rate as an employment in the United States. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Fact of the day. Yeah. Fact of the day. Uh, vets are the highest suicide rate employ- uh, job in the United States, which is unbelievable, man. The, the, the stuff that those people put themselves through and having experienced firsthand what it takes to be a vet. And nonetheless, a good vet, uh, and having some ignorant asshole go into a practice and scream them out, and then get like fifteen of their friends to leave a one star review to the practice and essentially ruin their lives. Yeah. To see people like succumb to that because they don't want to pay five hundred dollars to get a dog fixed, and it's like, do you not pay for yourself? Oh no, you don't because you have insurance. You have health insurance, so you pay what fifteen dollars a visit, when the insurance has to co-pay a thousand. Are you insane? It is about the money. It absolutely is about the money because that employee, that job wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. You know. But yeah, I mean, it's just a whole new respect for those people because as a human doctor, you have to know human, right? right? Yeah. As a vet. You got to know cows, chickens, cats, dogs, birds, lizards, all the fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, you can't just be selective of one. I mean, you right. can specialize in you one. Can you can specialize, absolutely. Know. But you got to specialize in the species. So yeah. if you want to be an exotic vet, you have to see all exotic animal animals, you know, and so mm-hmm. forth. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah. And, you know, if you guys ever get a dog, just, you know, which well, if you live yep. close enough. <laughs> Probably. Because you probably could within, within, live like yeah. 45 minutes away from us. Yeah. <laughs> It'll, so. It'll work out. It'll be great. We'll live close enough. I'll walk over. Yeah. We'll we'll hang out more than what we do now, probably. Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, Let's that's probably... If, if we have uh, uh, my girlfriend as a guest for the next podcast we can she can be the the guest expert and she can talk about more about you know fun animal facts because i think randomly when we sit down for dinner uh, i'll just start talking to her and and then she will just start talking for like fifteen thousand minutes about you know animal Mm -hmm. uh, medicine and i just sit there like listen and i'm like wow this would be an amazing freaking podcast because she's like she's like a a living library of information like she just pulls shit left and right that she's read and she has learned a lot yeah no that so sounds so that sounds great knowledge. it sounds perfect so uh what uh what should we name the podcast dude uh, um <laughs> i guess see. we should you're explain considered... that what we're doing here right uh, well hold on you're you're considered a millennial yeah yeah I, well, unfortunately found this out a little while ago, but I'm considered a Gen Z. I thought 97 was, I know, I thought, I thought 97 was the, was still in millennial territory, but apparently it's 96. Yep, 96 is the cutoff. Yep. So I think it'd be funny to have, uh, see, um, funny to have a name. Joe Rogan, uh, kind of ripped off the, the, the name that he has from like, the most popular podcast that existed when he started, mm-hmm. which I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it was the something experience. It was the dude's name. So it was like this guy's mm-hmm. experience. So Joe Rogan calls his 
the Joe Rogan experience. So I was kind of playing with the name, the healthy critics experience or the, the healthy critique experience or we're not really going to be critiquing experience. shit when we talk about, you know, we're just going to be talking about literally anything. Right. So we don't really have, um, cause a lot of podcasts have their own theme. I know mm-hmm. I have like a video game channel, but I don't want to focus on video games. Right. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot more to talk about. Um, exactly. well here we can, you know, what we can do, we can, we can brainstorm and stuff off, uh, off air and then we can, let's see if the audience has any, uh, any recommendations. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see if they've got anything for that. Let's see if anyone watches this or listens. And you know, if it's if it's PG or whatever. It oh, needs it's not to gonna be. be PG, dude. We're gonna oh, sweat boy. a lot. Well, I sweat a lot. Yeah. You've seen my yeah. videos. I don't fucking care. I know. I Even know. when I get monetized, I don't give a shit. They can just, just... Can't be too bad. Well, I mean, <laughs> I really don't care. You can anyone can come under the podcast and say whatever the hell they want. Uh well, as far as you can't just like you know. Uh, declare that Nazism was good, you know? But <laughs> yeah, you can no. say any swear word you want, like troglodyte. I don't give a fuck. You can just... Just don't be a dick. <laughs> I think you're... That'll, you're be the, that'll be the one the one rule in asterisks. Right. Don't be a dick. Just don't be an asshole, you know? Don't be an asshole. Don't be, be a, a dick. funny asshole. So, that'll yeah, I guess funny, we can... That'll be a funny name. We can... Oh, the, the funny assholes? <laughs> Or don't be a dick. <laughs> don't be a dick podcast. <laughs> don't be a dick podcast. Uh, well, um, yeah, I think I'm. I don't know. My vote is uh, the healthy critics. The healthy crit something experience, whether it be critics, criticism, or critique. Okay. You got plenty of fucking options. Right. A lot but of different um, ways to go with that. Yeah, we're just gonna be doing in how often um we could start once a week once a week joe rogan does like two a day oh my gosh yeah okay. he's busy <laughs> oh, i don't want to do two a day because <laughs> we don't have that many guests <laughs> right yeah i think well, uh we should give it like a week between so we can yeah. come up with shit to talk about right yeah because today was more of a kind of an impromptu last minute what yeah, the, what the hell's going on? I kind of, hey, I kind of wanted I, I to do it, this a while ago. I think it went well. Yeah. I've been, uh, I mean, even if no one watches this, dude, um, I'm just, I just want to do. It. I, I really wanted to try it and do it, and see where it goes. It's, it's good just to talk, where there's no, you know, visuals, no random bias, videos, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. It's just good. Just we good can to do talk. face cam sometime, or when you guys oh, move boy, down here, we fun. can actually do it in the room and fill film each other right like oh, film the good. whole table that'd be nice i'm definitely wearing something weird for that then yes or especially the first one yeah we're gonna be dressed like idiots <laughs> <laughs> well play us out johnny <laughs> Skip bap do bap boo boo do. So next time we should also get Sanders up in here. Yeah, we'll get more people. Um, I, I think once. Well, Donna's got a lot of. You know what would be good if we got Donna and your girlfriend in here. Dude, they love each other. I know, and well, their their passion and their knowledge about animals. Right. How, they we would, we will I mean, just. Just like walk we'll just off and there. let them do it for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, like it would be great. And then with with Anders or whoever else, I mean, it could be more of like an entertainment um, sort of feel something. Yeah. Uh, so we can definitely come up a, with a bunch of shit. Yeah, with the guests. I just broke my chair. Cool. So nice. Uh. I guess thanks everybody for watching or listening. You can't really watch this because I'm probably just going to have a static image in the background. Play this when your kid sleeps and I guarantee their IQ will go up at least 50 <laughs> points. How they say that if you want to learn a foreign language, just sleep with that language songs playing on the background. You'll They'll learn English in no time if they don't know it already. Yes.
Or if you yeah. just want them to get smart, either way. You or know, be um, condescending critics of everything. Yeah, exactly. One of my best friends hates my hates me for being so uh, self opinionated and critiquing everything. So when he found out the name of my channel, he's like, "Well, of course." You son of a bitch, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for doing this with me, man. Yeah, no problem. It's, I'll be uh, seeing fun. you on the good. next one. For sure. And peace.